Hey folks, Joseph A. Savora here, and I'm doing a new movie review this week. It's called Kane's Man, The Secret Service. It's a British spy action comedy that's based on the comic book The Secret Service from creator Dave Gibbons and Mark Mullar. It stars Colin Ferd, Samuel Jackson, Mark Strong, Teron Egerton, Michael Caine, Sophie Critson, Sophia Botella, Samantha Womack, Jeff Bell, Edward Holcroft, Jack Davenport, and Mark Hamill. It's co written and directed by Matthew Bond, the same man who gave us Layer Cake, Stardust, Kick Gas, and X Men First Class. The movie begins set on a mission in the Middle East in 1997. A secret agent named Harry Hart, whose codename is Galahad, is played by Colin Firth, had felt very guilty over the loss of his colleague, which has sacrificed himself just to save his team. He delivers a bravely medal to the agent's widow, Michelle Irwin, along with their young son, Gary, nicknamed Ixie, who would later be played by Teron. Egerton. They're saying that if they ever need any help, they give them their phone number on the back of the middle, which delivers a coded message. So 17 years later, Professor James Arnold, who's played unrecognizable by Mark Hamill, <laughs> hard to believe, who's being kidnapped by an internet billionaire, Richmond Ballantyne, who's played by Samuel Jackson, with a lisp. Uh, Hart wants up hiring his federal agents, including Lancelot, who was later killed by Ballantyne's henchwoman named Gazelle, who was played by Sophia Butilla, who basically has um, blades on her feet. Yeah, sharp blades, that is. Anyway, Known for his philanthropy, he continues to meet with various head of state and VIPs who go missing afterwards, and he announced a dead giveaway of SIM smart cards, which actually uh, winds up being planted inside the chip of their uh, heads, which only granted free cellular and internet access on those cell phones. So, in London, Ixi is now an unemployed young adult living with his mother, along with their infant half-sister and a very abusive stepfather named Dean. Being intelligent and capable, he left training for the Royal Marines and lived with an aimless life, but then suddenly he's being arrested for stealing the car you know, once they went inside a local bar you know, with his friends. Ixi calls the number on the back of the medal, which Hart arranged for his release to tell Ixi about the existence of a secret intelligence agency known as Kingsman, which both he and Ixi's father had worked for. So suddenly, after Lancelot's death, the agency opens a vacancy for a new agent, and Ixi is chosen to become his candidate. He also joined a group with other candidates, which includes a woman named Roxy, who's played by Sophie Cookson. So the, all their training is basically doing all these tests that's overseen by a senior Kingsman named Merlin, who's played by Mark Strawn, who they just basically uses him as a teacher, a pilot, or some sorts. Yeah, basically their test was just being overflowed by water into the bedroom, which uh, Ixi escapes by punching a, a two-side window. Yeah, and, and, and had the entire team escape, which only killed one of them, sadly. Then they started uh, going skydiving, you know, already trying to take out their parachutes, even though he claimed that one of them don't have one. So he tried to save them one by one. They try to take one of their dogs to take them with them, and you know, just to go, you know, dog walking and and all, 
here and there, and then, and this is where, this really bothers me too, because I always hate scenes like this, and, and they always had to fill that in, but I'm going to mention that later, because you know what happens uh, at the end. So when the candidates are eliminated one by one, Ixby and, and Roxy are the only ones that are remaining. Unfortunately, he fell his final test, and Roxy becomes a new Lancelot. Yeah, hard to believe. So then, Kingsman has been investigating Ballantyne's scheme with the connection of the BIP disappearance and noticed that Arnold is no longer missing. So then we found out that that a chimp was implanted in, inside Arnold's head and it wants up exploding, only killing him and lead to Tarts being the completely injured during their escape for all the other unknown asylums. So Hart winds up being posed as a billionaire and dines with Valentine just tried to discern his plans. Yeah, and I know because they were eating McDonald's. <laughs> and this is where they lead to another mission which it turns out that they went straight to Kentucky where that's where they lead to an, a very obscured hate group Towards the entire people, and yes, and this is where it leads to that that bloody massacre, which then Valentine basically sets him up by having having him killing all these people. Once uh, Valentine had set up the uh, the chips, you know, Ixy, Merlin, and Arthur had watched the entire video by ha having to see you know Hart uh, killing everybody in a massive brawl. One by one. Yeah, it's, it's really messed up when you saw that. One, and after they break out, Valentine winds up killing Hart in front of them after revealing his particular plan. Yeah. So then Ixie returns to the headquarters where he discovers that Arthur is one of Valentine's covers, and yeah, Arthur is played by Michael Caine. And that's when they find out about humanity had aching to a virus and global warming which leads to overpopulation. So Valentine's plan was actually was trying to um, unleash a, a countdown to actually uh, connect to all the, the cell phones elsewhere. Once the countdown starts, it'll lead to a, a huge brawl throughout the entire world. Yeah, which is a massive calling of the human race. So Ixi wants up teaming up with Roxy and Merlin just to stop Valentine's his plan. So Roxy pilots a high altitude balloon vehicle just to shoot a missile between one of the satellites that's connecting to Valentine's uh, signal. And then only to find out that there was also a substitute satellite too. So trying to activate the signal causing the global pandemonium. So while Ixie and Merlin at once up inside the bunker where he's already been hidden filled with tons of guards and everybody around already you know having their chips already planted in their heads and they basically stop everybody in sight yeah, and try to go after um, Gazelle and then later you know, Valentine from happening yep at least a huge fight between those two and once they kill them they they stop him, and then, and then of course, uh, <laughs> Ixie finally saved the world. Yeah, well, by having everybody already having exploding heads uh, and fireworks. Yeah, pretty messed up having to see that scene. And then, <laughs> and then the movie ends where he wants up uh, saving a princess that's already been locked up inside, and this is where it sort of plays exactly like like all the other James Bond movies. So yeah, um, that's basically what the movie's about, and I enjoyed it. it. It's actually what it was. It's an, it's basically what it is. A James Bond movie filled with wall-to-wall ultra-violence and lots of um, funny dialogue. Because I know we've been seeing a lot of secret agent movies like this, and this one seems very effective for what it is. 
But I guess I can understand this movie being very painful to watch. And it's true, because it is sort of painful. Mostly to see you know, people actually getting killed, you know, getting sliced up with, with those blades that Gazelle has uh, on her feet. Yeah, lots of that stuff, and you know all all the exploding heads that that turns into fireworks, and <laughs> you know having every everybody being exploded with with that chip that's been implanted inside, and then then it gets to a bloody massacre uh, at the church group, and uh, wow, even worse, um, a massive brawl throughout the entire world. Everybody's like beating the shit out of everybody. E even his mother almost tried to kill uh, his baby sister. And that, that was really messed up. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, and even worse. I mean, they also added some animal cruelty in, in the film, too. Mostly from the dogs. And I was afraid, too, because... Yeah, once again, I knew they were going to do this. And I predicted it, too. They, you know, they always had to throw in... A cute puppy, you know, just for just for part of the training, and then later on they're just gonna say, "Oh, we're gonna kill the dog." I hate it when movies do that. It's it's not fun. It isn't. But I know that's pretty much what I expect to see these days. But other than that, though, I I really enjoyed the the idea of the film. I thought this was really interesting, seeing that it's based on a comic book, and Writer and director Matthew Bond's been known for doing films like this, you know, with layer cake and kick ass because, you know, he always wants to throw in a lot of over the top violence filled with dark comedy and all of that. Yeah. Although I had to say, Colin Firth did a very good job playing a, a James Bond type of role. I mean, this was perfect because he definitely can play the role very well. I mean, this, this is an Oscar winning actor, you know. You know, he's been in several movies, and, and this is where he wants up playing a secret agent. It was just pretty sad that he got killed. Although, technically, I think they're going to bring him back. Yeah, it, once they start making a sequel, which... Yeah, that's what I heard. They might make a sequel to this. Um, newcomer, uh, Teron Egerton. Um, yeah. I mean, there were times when I think his acting was a bit off, but... He seemed to go very well once... We get to the the final stages, you know, trying to challenge uh, you know, Harry in, in this movie, <laughs> and I, I like that. And I like all these secret gadgets that they had for the film because it just looks so awesome. Yeah, definitely in that particular style. Yeah, I know they have Michael Caine in the film too, you know, playing the supposedly his boss, you know, Arthur, which then he later became as we speak, you know. You know, working for Valentine. Mark Campbell, who played the professor in the film, did a good job. I mean, considering how small his role really was. And, and it's hard to believe because he looked very unrecognizable, you know, compared to his role in Star Wars and, and all of his other uh, voice acting talents he's been doing. It's just, I never knew that was him all this time. Yeah, you know, just a shame that, you know. Yeah, he met his fate at, uh, during the middle part of the film. And Samuel Jackson playing Ballantyne in the film is just basically just another typical villain that Jackson had to offer. Yeah, I feel like he was just was pretty lousy, in my opinion. As basically just your typical you know, over-the-top hamminess uh, for a villain. I mean, geez, I mean, doesn't Jackson ever get tired of playing villains? That's just annoying I mean I, I love Samuel Jackson as an actor and I mean he can play a lot of badass roles no matter what he does but geez I mean can they ever give him a better villain these days I mean this is almost like the villain he played in Jumper and and the spirit I mean geez give this guy a break uh, however I thought, I thought Gazelle was actually a very good villain much better than what Samuel Jackson had to play. Yep, and she was played by Sophie Botella. A lot of that style that she did, where she was using her, her blades uh, on her feet, just to you know slice everybody uh, in half and 
and cut everybody's uh, arms and limbs, you know, once they try to stop all these agents. Yeah, it was basically that's what they were going to go for. And, I mean, yeah, it may not be for everybody if you're expecting it to be like all these spy movies that we've seen. But that's just what they were going to go for, so... I know. Hard to believe this movie actually made money. Um, it went up to uh, over 400 million worldwide. It actually became the highest grossing film that Matthew Bond has ever done. So that's cool. Probably did pretty well at the in the U.S., even though... Despite the fact that this movie came out on the same weekend with that stupid, god awful, horrible Fifty Shades of Shit. Yeah, because they both came out on Valentine's Day. <laughs> this was a better film. At least. But anyway, I did enjoy the film and I really recommended it. I give Kane's Man the Secret Service. Four stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.